Okay, excellent. All right, so today's presentation is gonna be all about rethinking money. We are going to start with a little outline here. Uh, the majority of what we're talking about is probably gonna be about the value of money and how money can mean different things to different people. And I want to take today to really just show you a different way of thinking about money. Um, and then after that, we're gonna talk a little bit about saving and spending and then budgeting, which some people think sounds hard when they first hear about it, but I promise you it's way easier than it sounds. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is an investment that I made when I was young. Um, I was given a choice in eighth grade between two different items. And the choice that I took, um, it was a $600. It gave me the ability to work and I still have it to this day. And in the end, it's given me a lot more value than it actually cost me. And my last final hint on what you might be able to guess it is, is that it gives me the ability to exercise. Does anyone want to take a guess at what it might be? So this was my first investment was a bicycle. The reason that I consider it an investment and not a something that I just bought is because it was able to help me bike to work once I got a job. And so it was able to provide me with that income. And it was basically just very helpful for me. Um, when I was in eighth grade, I originally just wanted to buy an airsoft gun because I just wanted to have fun with my brother. And I just wanted to spend the money on something cool and fun for me. But I decided that it would be better to choose this instead and it ended up being a really great choice um so yeah that's like a little bit of background for me of like why i first got interested um so to tell you a little bit about what i do um, i study economics and that's basically the study of money choices and behavior and so what economists do is they look at the various data that's around. And so they basically analyze data and try to make decisions for themselves, for their businesses, for the country. And that's really what I was interested in is just figuring out why do people spend money the way they do? Why do businesses spend money the way they do? And how can we kind of figure out the best way to spend money? Those sort of things. All right, now I have something a little more fun for you guys. So this is a little puzzle about money. So what exactly is money? So money, dollar bills in the US are made out of cotton and linen. But before becoming money, the price of that cotton and linen is only worth six cents. It's not worth a lot of money. So how is it that this can be worth a hundred? Do you guys have any ideas? Um, well, I guess, um, so the material, um, it's made out of cotton, but um, I guess like it has special, like whatever, in kind of stuff that like, um, like when people like scan it or something, like they know it's like a hundred dollars or, like it says a hundred dollars on it nice it's a really good guess yeah that's uh the special ink and everything that they put in there is definitely part of it the the reason that money is worth something is because everybody in america agrees that it's worth something basically money doesn't have to be made out of cotton it doesn't have to be a piece of paper it doesn't even have to be a coin. Money could be, it could have been something else. But as a country, we all agreed that, hey, let's just pretend that this money is going to be worth this much. And whenever you sell something, this is how much money you get. And whenever you buy something, this is how much money you pay. So money is basically a tool. And I think that's the easiest way to think about it. Uh, money is also a representation of value. So it allows you to trade without having what the other person wants. Um, 
back before there was money, you know, like when cavemen and whatnot were running around in order to get what you wanted, you know, like, let's say you wanted to get like a hammer or, you know, some food from somebody. If you wanted something from somebody, you would have to give something to them. And that works for a little while, but eventually, you know, you want something that the other person has, but you may not have something exactly that they want. And so then you're not able to get what you want. You can't trade with them because you only have what you have and you don't have what they want. Um, yeah, so that's that point, basically. Money allows us to function as a tool and allows um, for trade. So let's say that you really want a cupcake from somebody. Somebody's a baker and they're really good at making cupcakes. And so what you have to offer for them, you know, you guys are young, you're in fifth grade. So I'm going to say maybe you could build them a house in Minecraft for them. I think that'd be something fun, you know, but that's where the problem comes in. What if you don't have what they want? You know, like not every person who bakes cupcakes is going to want you to build a house for them in Minecraft. And, and so that's not always going to work. So when we talk about money, we, I like to think of it as value and to talk a little bit more about what that means. Value is essentially what society and what individuals decide that something is worth. So if something has a higher price tag, then society has collectively said, you know, this bicycle is more valuable than this food. And there's many different reasons why that may be, but ultimately, a really good way to think about money is to think about how valuable something is. But one of the problems is that the price is not always linked to the value of something. And I think the best example of this is probably water because water would be the most valuable thing there is. You know, you can't live without it and everybody needs it, but it's not expensive, it's very cheap. Um, food is relatively cheap as well, and it's just as important. And so there are some things where money and value are not necessarily tied together. So um, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, so like, um, so there are sometimes like things that are like not as valuable, but then like, um, they are like some people list it as like something that's super expensive for some reason then so like um how would like we explain that so like it's not in um so it's not in value but they they listed it as something expensive or something that's not affordable yeah that's a really good question um certain things that people do can make something have more value so marketing and advertising companies do that to try and make things that are perhaps lower value normally they try to make people want it more and the more people want something the higher value something has um, one fun example i'd like to think of is when you go to a restaurant and you buy a soda the soda only costs about eight cents and they charge you you know two and a half dollars for the soda and people are willing to pay for that because they think that the soda is worth $2 to them. And the re it would be cheaper, except the soda companies use marketing to make people really want soda. And because people really want soda, they're willing to pay $3 instead of eight cents for it. And so... <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so sometimes like it's um, so like people like convince like people like let's say um, so like the company or someone like uses like marketing sometimes to like convince someone that um, something is like really high and valuable actually like um, it actually isn't and they're still charging you for like a, for 
for like a lot of money or like something yeah yeah in fact uh when my when my dad was in high school there was a really fun thing that went around called pet rocks and it was basically someone's idea to decide hey let me just take a bunch of rocks and then put googly eyes on them and put glitter and hats and then i'll sell them to people and call it a pet rock so if you can't afford a dog or a cat then you can have a pet rock and it was it was really successful and it made a lot of money and it just went to show that things people value don't inherently always tie with what they're worth um, and that can go the other way as well too it's, it's not always that you know there's going to be something that's not really worth anything and people are making it worth a bunch of money um, there can also be things that are worth a lot but they lower in money and and that's also the example of water and food and um, like internet is one of those examples as well where it's worth a lot but we lower the value of it to help everybody out so yeah, that ties in well with uh, this next little activity. Um, we can use this little Venn diagram to talk about the things that you all value and then talk about the things that society values and we'll see if there's some that fit in there. So what are some ideas? I'll go ahead and write text in here. I'm gonna start off with one. Something I value would be, hmm, I'm gonna say, um, Let's see, I guess a comfy bed. So I'm probably gonna put that in the middle because I think what I value for a comfy bed, everybody else is probably gonna value as well. But let me think of another example here. Like if I were to say, Hmm. Maybe my English souvenirs. So this might be like a little piece of wood that I have from Sweden. So it's not really worth a lot, but in my head, it means a lot to me. And if someone were to want to buy it from me, I would probably say, hey, you're going to need to give me a hundred dollars. But they might not think it's worth that, but to me, I value it that way. Do you have any examples of things you guys value that the rest of the world might not? Music or like the violin. Okay. Violin, nice. Let's go ahead and add that. Which category do you think that would go in? Probably things I value because there's some people in my class who don't like music at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that's true. Not everybody values violin. I do think that at least because those people, even if they don't like to play violin, they could probably sell it. They they'd still might go and it, I guess it depends on your definition, but I probably would put it in the middle here just because they can still sell it for money. So it's still something that they might value. They just might look at it differently than you. Do you have any ideas, Grace? Do you have any um, things that you value? It's okay if you don't wanna share. <laughs> Let's see. Now I'm gonna add some stuff to things which society values, but I don't necessarily value. This category can be a little bit tricky to think of at first. Um, I think for me, I'm gonna write sports cars. Because for me, I think it, it um, they're, they cost too much money. And even though I could technically sell it, I think that there's kind of a burden of having to have insurance on the car and having to store the car and protect the car. Um, and so I think I don't really value it in that way. Um, let's see. 
All right. Okay, so let me clear the annotations here. Not drawings. All right. So why does all this matter? I know so far it might seem like, well, you know, it's great that money is value, but how is that going to help me? How am I going to grow up and get through elementary school? And how is that going to actually change my life? But I think the reason that it matters to kind of remember that money is value is because sometimes you can learn to think instead of spending money, I'm spending value on different things. And it can help you, especially when it comes to decisions that are hard, but they're the right decision with money. Um, when it comes to, um, you, if you took the other lesson, you know, investing and spending money on stocks, um, all those sort of things, it doesn't really feel great when you're first doing it because it's like, oh, dang, I could have spent that money on something else. But if you think of it as value and especially the future value that you're getting, um, it can make those decisions a little bit easier. And a lot of the times, if you remind yourself that you want to get something that has more value instead of wasting money on something that has less value. So for me, you know, it's, I could go out every day and spend, you know, some dollars on a bag of chips. Or if I remember that, oh, I don't really value potato chips that much. To me, it's, it's only like 10 minutes of happiness. But if I save that money, I could get a cool electric scooter, which would probably be more valuable. You know, I would enjoy that for much longer and it wouldn't just go away. So um, could this also apply to like gift cards since I like that I'll have a have an Apple gift card so like I could spend um like something on like um something like I don't know like an air tag something that you could like use to find your items but then I could like um use like spend more money up so I could like use the Apple card and like my other money to like buy something else like a MacBook for example I mean I already have one but like an iMac, for example, or something. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all about, you know, choosing and deciding what value is to you. And and like you said, if you already own a, a couple Mac products, then that kind of changes the value of things. You know, like if you if you didn't have any electronics, um, a MacBook would be pretty high value to you because you don't have anything. But if you already have an iPad, that kind of lowers how much value you get from a MacBook because you can already do a lot of that with an iPad. So that's where that would kind of fall in. All right, so now we can talk a little bit about wants versus needs. So needs are really easy, basically just the highest value of anything. Um, needs in this financial sense are things that you can't live without and they are things that you will always be required to purchase. Businesses can have needs as well as people. Governments can have needs. Um, we'll just focus on people for today. And then wants are just going to be pretty much everything outside of a need. If it isn't a need, then it's going to be a want. Um, so as a result, its value is always going to be lower than a need will be. Some easy examples of wants and needs. Um, yeah, basically food, water, housing, clothing. Medical care is a pretty big need, especially as you get older. It's, it's one of the big things people don't think about. Um, and then everything else would fall in wants. Um, as you grow and become older, the things that you want will change, the things that you need will change. Um, people who start families all of a sudden have to take care of others' needs. And so that's a big cost and it's a big thing to plan for. And so the planning part of that is where we'll talk about budgeting in a little bit. 
So when it comes to saving versus spending, some questions to think about are really how much of your allowance do you save? How much of your spending of that allowance is on a need? And how much of that spending is on a want? If you're, you know, if you have most of your needs taken care of, then it lets you spend more money on wants. And so that can be very helpful. Basically, all it comes down to is balance. Um, as long as you're not spending too much, then you'll be okay. But on the other side, there are people who fall into the trap of saving too much. Uh, I, I think when I was younger, I honestly did that too much. I basically never spent any money. And that can be, you know, it can be hard. It makes it so that you maybe miss out on certain fun things in life. Um, so I, I personally think that it's basically just a balance and it's all about trying to figure out, you know, where you fall. Um, and so moving forward with that, we can talk about budgeting because that is how we plan that balance. So what is a budget? Basically a budget is just a little written guide, just is basically a decision when you decide I'm gonna spend money on this, I'm gonna spend money on this. And it's pretty simple. You basically just pick categories and then you can choose how much you expect to spend on a category. Um, it's probably hard for you guys right now because you don't spend money on that many different categories. You know, it's probably mostly entertainment and food, but we'll show you some examples here to kind of help you out in a little while. So budgeting in a nutshell. Here's a nice little tool that we're gonna use. Um, it'll just show us what it's like. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in what the average salary in the US is right now, which uh, should be $48,000. So, the, the weird thing about this calculator is it asks for how much you want to save first. I think, I think they have the idea in mind that you kind of know what your expenses are already. But for this, we're going to say perhaps 5,000 and see what happens. So one of the biggest items on anyone's budget is going to be housing. Um, usually takes about 30% of your budget. Uh, in this example, these are actually pretty cheap houses for where I live. <laughs> I wish I lived somewhere cheaper, but uh, yeah. So here are some choices. I want you guys to look at them, kind of just decide and think which, if you could choose one, which would you choose? Um, I'll probably choose the first or second one because I'm probably going to be living on my own or like, I, I mean, I wouldn't be like living with anyone else, so. Yeah, yeah, and that means that that's something that you value, you know, if you value the ability to um, basically live on your own and not have to share a kitchen with somebody, um, that can be important. And, and sometimes, you know, if you were to share a room with somebody, you might actually like waste time, you know, like doing certain things, like having to wait to use the kitchen and having to wait to use the um, dishwasher and things like that. Um, and so sometimes because of your time, your time is worth value as well. So sometimes it could even be technically cheaper to pay a little more but you end up getting more time out of it. So yeah, I think, yeah, and also think the second choice may be also a little better since an apartment, most apartments, like um, if I want to make music or like play the violin, then probably the walls are pretty thin, so it might disturb some other neighbors or like people in an apartment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. It's possible to spend more money and get a better location. And maybe that'll save you time when you have to drive to work. 
but maybe not. Maybe this will just maybe work from home and that won't actually save you money. So we'll go with that one. Some of the things adults have to pay for uh, cell phones. Um, you can get pay a little more and get unlimited messages. That's pretty nice. I think we'll go with that. You know, a lot of people nowadays have unlimited messaging. Um, we probably don't need a, a phone in the house, but, and we probably want a little bit of TV and then the internet is important too, it helps us do our job. So here you can see our money. This is how much total monthly income we're getting. And the fixed expenses, these are so far all the things that we've been getting put on our budget. So in this case, we're probably, since we're in America, we probably won't use public transport, but we can probably get a cheap little car here, a little old Ford Escort. Um, a lot of people don't necessarily go with older used cars. You know, they decide that they want to lease a car and leasing is one of those things that like if you take a personal finance class later in life, they'll tell you don't lease anything, don't do it because it's, uh, you know, it's basically just paying more because you don't have the money up front, um, those sort of things. But apparently from the statistics I've seen, uh, like one in every three cars on the road is being leased. Um, and so that just means using someone else's money to pay for the car, basically. So for insurance, this stuff is probably a little bit too complicated for um, the level of this class right now. So we'll just kind of go through that, but basically um, say- So sorry to interrupt. I think mm -hmm. um, I also, so like if you have a scholarship for like a college, then would you like um, have to pay for it as well? Or like if you, um or like if so like if you have a scholarship then do you still like need to pay for like need to like add an amount for that if you have a scholarship that is going to be basically counted towards your income towards college so college is going to be a big expense it's going to be you know seventy thousand dollars um of an expense towards you and so the scholarship is going to be a, a, an asset and so that's going to be basically going towards that so you're still probably going to end up paying money unless you manage to get a full ride um, but yeah that's where we count for that all right so we should be pretty close to done with our budget here and then we have a nice fun quiz actually um, it's a kahoot game so that should be pretty fun so savings it looks like we still have a pretty good amount left. So I'm going to try and put in 10% of the money that I have towards a savings account. And it looks like we went to college. So we have to pay $200 to college each month just to pay off the college debt. Here's things like groceries. We're going to try and eat a lot of groceries, but we also have to have dinner. And then we're also going to pack lunch. Uh, here, we're planning for things like movies and books. Uh, I'm just gonna make up some numbers here so we can get to the end. And cash that we spend every week. Usually on a budget, you'll probably have something at the very end, kind of like your miscellaneous or just free spending money. Um, if you're doing a good job of putting money in savings and living within your means, then usually you only have a little bit of money left over for this sort of thing, but you'll at least have planned for it. So we're gonna plan for spending $40 a week on things that we didn't plan for. You know, someone invites us to lunch and we didn't plan for it, or somebody says, hey, do you wanna go buy this new video game? Um, new video game just came out and you just want to get it. And so you have to have a little money that you plan for that. 
So if we look at it, here's our result. We're getting $2,600 every month from work. And out of that $2,600, 1,400 of it is going towards the bills. It's going towards car payments, all the stuff that's pretty much a necessity. Um, food as well, I believe was in here. And then the variable expenses, they can still be necessities like books for school, for instance, but it's not happening every single month. So that's the difference between these categories. A fixed expense is something that's happening every single month on a regular schedule. And a variable is something that can change. So you never know if your school is gonna tell you, hey, you need to go out and get a new book or your car, you need a parking pass to, in order to park. And so you can get a sudden expense that way and that would be a variable expense. Alrighty. Um, so, so like now, since like there was like only $446 left, um, so it's like we wanted to invest like something, right? We wanted to like, we wanted to buy something that was like, I don't know, like $500, but then like there was only um, $446 left. And then you also need to pay the taxes for whatever you're buying then. So like, how would that be like possible? Like if you have like less money than like you want, you actually need to like buy whatever you want, you whatever you want. Yeah. That's a really good question because a lot of people in America struggle with that. They, you know, end up having jobs that don't pay enough and they end up having expenses that go up and it can be a struggle. You know, the, the usual advice um, from a lot of financial instructors is to do your best to cut out the things that aren't necessary first. And so that would be, you know, maybe the TV bill. You could cut out the TV costs. You can try and eat more groceries and, and less restaurant food. Those are some of the first steps. Um, unfortunately for a lot of people, even those steps, they're already doing that and it's still not good enough. Um, in that case, sometimes pursuing higher education, going back to college, going to community college, um, going to trade school is what they call it. Uh, that's basically where you learn to be an electrician or an elevator repairman, um, cable provider, basically very like hands-on skills. And so um, those are the types of things that people have done to try and get around that to, I guess, to try and and then to answer your question also, you said, what if there's something that's $500 and I really want it, but all I have is 446 at the end of the month. You in the budget, uh, you can plan for goals. So let's say, oh, I have a trip to go somewhere like Hawaii and I wanna plan for that. I know I can't afford that with just one month, but I can put that in the budget and write it down every month for the next year. I'm going to save $40 a month. And by the time that year's up, I'll have enough for one ticket to Hawaii. So usually breaking it down into baby steps is the way to make things happen with your budget. So 